Where are we right now? Is this the school? The school event? Hostile school takeover? I'm going in. One thing I appreciate about the show is that things really move along. The plot moves. Who's this person with him? Looks like Mob. Or not. <laughs> you know. I thought that hat was hair. <laughs> what are you saying? You can't do it? Is this his protege? Ijichi's no doormat, and he's no coward. Closet badass. Hell yeah. I knew it all along. I've been in your corner since day one, Ijichi. Dramatic hallway <laughs> running. <laughs> no one leaves Ijichi behind. And that brings us back to the current moment. You sort of know that Junpei's being set up to go down a dark road, but didn't stop me from hoping. Although it's not too late. There's one thing anime has taught me, is that redemption can happen for anyone. Except the Queen of Bossing Sei. I didn't realize his beautiful eyes were immortalized in the opening. And Junpei is there! How did I ne never notice that before? It's crazy how the openings take on such a different life as you watch the shows. It's part of their genius. Episode 12. To you, someday! In a thousand years, perhaps? The time is less defined. <laughs> He doesn't fully believe this himself. He's just kind of given up. It feels good to give in. I don't know what that even means. This is very Kingdom Hearts-esque in its hearts and shadows and souls system. Who understands it? No one. But even if hearts are formed from souls, does it even matter where they come from? Assuming we have hearts. Junpei has a heart. It just seems like he wants to believe there's something better or higher than humanity because it's been such a struggle for him. To not say the beauty in something could mean that there's no beauty in it, but it might also mean that you just haven't found the beauty yet. This is a random connection to make, but I've thought about this with music. You know, people will belittle certain genres saying that it's not music or that it's too simple, but actually to a certain extent, the simplicity lies in them. You know, people who enjoy it are getting the complexity and the beauty of it, which means that it's there to be found. There's a mistake belief almost that being above something or thinking you're higher than something or too refined for something is understanding when actually it might be the opposite. It might be a lack of appreciation. It might be a lack of understanding. That is a widely pervasive phenomenon, not just to music, but to life as well. You know, it's really easy to dispense with the meaning of life if you haven't found it. It's easy to throw away your own soul if you don't understand its value. Although I'm not sure I'm using heart and soul the same way that the show is. It seems very specific. It's all an illusion. But I have the right to enforce it. Poison, interesting. Like the poison slowly eating away at his own heart, soul, who knows. <laughs> I just punched this jellyfish in the face. A for effort. Oh! Damn! Way more effective than I thought it would be. When in doubt, just punch harder. He's immune to poison. His heart is clean. The lion turtle comes to mind. The poison of hatred. That was the dangling thin thread keeping him together. Nah. You know who you're dealing with. That sound design though would be great. <laughs> Yuji also somewhat confused by the terms, the terminology. Trying to escape. Indeed. It's all so much finagling. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard to understand him, but it's also not that hard to see past him. Here you go, Yuji. He's not convinced. It would just be too painful to admit what it would mean if they did. Hey, it's honest. It's alright. He sort of let that happen. He's got no will to fight here. Why are we fighting? This feels like exactly right, too. It feels like exactly the right approach. The truth is, it's amazing. It's unbelievably meaningful to Junpei. It's not that he can't see things, it's that the things he sees affect him so deeply that it hurts, which is really easy to understand and sympathize with. And it's a surprisingly common thought process. The more I think about it, the more I notice it in life, where people evaluate the truth of things not based on the evidence, but instead accept or reject things based on how much they like or fear the consequences of that truth. But the fact is, if our objective is the truth, Sometimes the truth paints a pretty bleak picture. Not liking the bleak picture does not make it less true. But the true heart can withstand the poison of hatred. So the answer is to accept what's actually in front of you, but maybe rejecting the consequences. You know, maybe the truth doesn't imply what you think it implies. For example, the fact that people have hearts and can do evil with their hearts 
does not mean that that's the assessment of humanity. It does not mean that all hope is lost. It does not mean that he can't be a good person and, and live a great, happy life. Could this actually have worked? Is it wrong to believe? <laughs> but we got meddlers. And not the Deku kind. They're not gonna let this fly. Nah, I feel like this is too good to be true. As much as this would be great and awesome. It's a great idea to give him an objective, something to hope for and believe in. And then it all just goes out the window. Because... Mahito. I'm glad I wasn't the only one to think that. Look at my big arm. He was warned. To be fair, he was a little bit distracted and helping a friend. I mean, I was also caught up in the Junpei scene. Um, about that. Yeah, people want to weaken your weapons. Don't think about it. There's nothing stupid about Junpei. Well, so much for this parallel with protégés. He had to give him that form, huh? There's no returning him, right? Oh, he hates- he was already averse to killing. This is all part of Rita's plan. Save Junpei. Wow. Why, jerk? So he actually has the capability. Why refuse? <laughs> oh no. It was awful. Yeah, Sukuna's is not on your side. Not yet, anyway. Still in there somewhere. Did they all hang out? That's a Juju Sampo I missed. <laughs> he just died of his own accord? <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, what? Did he just somehow neutralize his ability? What does it mean? He did his soul! Soul punch! Right, naturally. It's so obvious. The soul system. <laughs> Everyone understands it. You understand the contours of a soul. Total conviction. What's it gonna be? Oh, <laughs> alright. I believe it. So much for being averse to killing. But this is not the needle moving one step closer to darkness. And that wasn't even Sukuna's influence. That's That's all him. Is he really gone? I'm still sort of holding out hope. <laughs> Creepy lake for good measure. And again with the licking, for no reason. <laughs> He's got the one technique that can actually hurt him. Awesome. The wings are such a great touch. Yeah, he does that. I love the flame effects. <gasps> uh, yeah, my luck, exactly. Damn! He talked about a killing form and he delivered hook chains. His abilities are really cool. But maybe he can. There is a question raised by he who hates overtime. Is there no connection between the mass he can create and its original form? <laughs> you just can't get anywhere near him. You just can't touch him. <laughs> Whoop something up. Okay, there's the answer, I think. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yeah, how do you even- f you can't fight him with physical attacks, direct physical attacks. Just to touch him means to make yourself vulnerable. And then they meet. 
Yeah, Skuna's not on anyone's side, except for his own. Welcome to my domain. <laughs> oh. You know, I think anyway, he's just got a clear indication that the Tanjiro really wants to go anyway. Hey, summoning his inner Tanjiro. Oh, while well, he's on the way down. Soul headbutts and face kicks. He's not done. <laughs> wow. Wait, what? A what? Huh? Huh? Yeah, huh? Yes! It's so all times. It's not good. The mom is not on you. Jubi's not on you either. I have holes in my hands, holes in my torso, but I'll just use my protagonist's power and walk it off. I moved my insides around to avoid critical damage. Exactly. Boy, soon you bleed now. Itadori. Yeah. We got an angle. Soul punched him. Itadori kun ni yatsu no jutsu shiki ga kikanai. Ni Itadori kun wo koroseni riyu ga aru. I think it's both. This is really cool pair. And giving him the respect that he wanted to. Don't get yourself into what? danger. That's all out the window. Damn, these episodes are going by fast. Juju Sampo. Okay. Is this the beach domain? <laughs> what am I watching? <laughs> I guess this is just what Chris is doing in their free time. Why is this so graphic all of a sudden? Alright. <laughs> I don't know what. Remember, this is all canon, ladies and gentlemen. Things move so fast in the show. Like, I thought the Junpei relationship was going to be a much longer one. But as short as it was, it's definitely a turning point for Yuji. Gave him a lot of conviction, even if that conviction is to, to kill. I'm not really sure if that will be the final assessment. If that actually is where he's going. I feel like he might rein it in at a certain point. But I think it's going to take me a while to piece it together. But I'm wondering what exactly the significance of the soul is here. And what it means that Yuji is the one who can actually attack at a soul level. There's the explanation that Mahito gave, which is that he lives with various souls inside of him, so that gives him an enhanced ability, but I feel like there's probably more to it as well. There seems to be a secondary layer, a human layer, to just about everything we've seen in the show so far, so I imagine it's here as well. But I wonder what it is, you know, what is it that makes Yuji different? What is it that makes up his core that makes him the antidote to a meaningless world? That's something to keep an eye on as the show continues. Also something to keep an eye on, this upcoming battle, which I'm sure will be amazing.